Australian Broadcasting Corporation, Wikipedia Article Audio The Australian Broadcasting Corporation is Australia's national broadcaster, funded by the Australian Federal Government but specifically independent of government and politics in the Commonwealth. The ABC plays a leading role in journalistic independence and is fundamental in the history of broadcasting in Australia, its model based on but not restricted to the BBC in the United Kingdom. Originally financed in a similar method to the British model using consumer licence fees on broadcasting receivers, its funding evolved to a projected model approved by the Australian Parliament. In recent times, the corporation provides television, radio, online and mobile services throughout metropolitan and regional Australia, as well as overseas through Australia Plus and Radio Australia. Founded in 1929 as the Australian Broadcasting Company, the ABC was a government-licensed consortium of private entertainment and content providers, authorised under supervision to broadcast on the airwaves using a two-tiered system. The A system derived its funds primarily from the licence fees levied on the purchasers of the radio receivers with an emphasis on building the radio wave infrastructure into regional and remote areas, whilst the B system relied on privateers and their capacity to establish viable enterprises using the new technology. Following the general downward economic trends of the era, as entrepreneurial ventures in national infrastructure struggled with viability, the company was subsequently acquired to become a fully state-owned corporation on July 1, 1932 and renamed as Australian Broadcasting Commission, realigning more closely to the British, BBC model. Origin History the Australian Broadcasting Corporation Act 1983 changed the name of the organisation to the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, effective July 1, 1983. Although funded and owned by the government, the ABC remains editorially independent as insured through the Australian Broadcasting Corporation Act 1983. The ABC is sometimes informally referred to as ANTI, originally an imitation of the British Broadcasting Corporation's nickname. The first public radio station in Australia opened in Sydney on November 23, 1923 under the call sign 2SB with other stations in Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth and Hobart following. A licensing scheme administered by the Postmaster General's Department, was soon established allowing certain stations government funding, albeit with restrictions placed on their advertising content. Following a 1927 Royal Commission inquiry into radio licensing issues, the government established the National Broadcasting Service which subsequently took over a number of the larger funded stations. It also nationalised the Australian Broadcasting Company which had been created by entertainment interests to supply programmes to various radio stations. On July 1, 1932, the Australian Broadcasting Commission was established, taking over the operations of the National Broadcasting Service and eventually establishing offices in each of Australia's capital cities. Over the next four years the stations were reformed into a cohesive broadcasting organisation through regular programme relays, coordinated by a centralised bureaucracy. The Australian broadcast radio spectrum was constituted of the ABC and the commercial sector. 1920s 40s News broadcasts were initially restricted, due to pressure from Sir Keith Murdoch who controlled many Australian newspapers. However, journalists such as Frank Dixon and John Hind began to subvert the agreements in the late 1930s. In 1939, 
Warren Denning was appointed to Canberra as the first ABC political correspondent, after Murdoch had refused to allow his newspapers to cover a speech by Joseph Lyons. In 1942 the Australian Broadcasting Act was passed, giving the ABC the power to decide when, and in what circumstances, political speeches should be broadcast. Directions from the minister about whether or not to broadcast any matter now had to be made in writing, and any exercise of the power had to be mentioned in the Commission's annual report. It was used only once, in 1963. In the same year, Kindergarten of the Air began on ABC Radio in Perth, and was later broadcast nationally. 1950s 70s Cater argues that reform was urgently needed in 1945. The ABC commenced television broadcasting in 1956, and followed the earlier radio practice of naming the station after the first letter of the base state. ABN2 Sydney was inaugurated by Prime Minister Robert Menzies on November 5, 1956 with the first broadcast presented by Michael Charlton, and James Dibble reading the first television news bulletin. ABV2 followed two weeks later, on November 18, 1956. Stations in other capital cities followed, ABQ2, ABS2, ABW2, and ABT2. ABC3 Canberra opened in 1961 and ABD6 started broadcasting in 1971, both named after the base city. Although radio programs could be distributed nationally by landline, television relay facilities were not in place until the early 1960s. This meant that news bulletins had to be sent to each capital city by teleprinter, to be prepared and presented separately in each city with filmed materials copied manually and sent to each state. Other television programs at the time included the popular Six O'Clock Rock hosted by Johnny O'Keefe, Mr. Squiggle, as well as operas and plays. 1980s-90s In 1973 New South Wales Rugby League boss Kevin Humphreys negotiated Rugby League's first television deal with the ABC. In 1975, colour television was introduced into Australia, and within a decade the ABC had moved into satellite broadcasting, greatly enhancing its ability to distribute content nationally. In the same year, the ABC introduced a 24-hour a-day AM rock station in Sydney, 2JJ, which was eventually expanded into the national Triple J FM network. A year later, a national classical music network was established on the FM band, broadcasting from Adelaide. It was initially known as ABC FM referring both to its fine music programming and radio frequency. 2000s ABC budget cuts began in 1976 and continued until 1985. In 1978 the ABC NSW Staff Association organized a strike against budget cuts and political interference. Sydney ABC was off air for four days. A packed free concert in support was held at the Regent Theatre and compared by Bob Hudson. It featured Fred Dagg and Robin Archer. In 1991, Tom Malumby wrote, 2010s The Australian Broadcasting Corporation Act 1983 changed the name of the organisation from the Australian Broadcasting Commission to the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, effective July 1, 1983. At the same time, the newly formed corporation underwent significant restructuring. The ABC was split into separate television and radio divisions, with an overhaul of management, finance, property, and engineering. 
Jeffrey Whitehead was the initial managing director, however, following his resignation in 1986, David Hill took over his position. Program production in Indigenous Affairs, Comedy, Social History and Current Affairs was significantly expanded, while the corporation's output of drama was boosted. Local production trebled from 1986-91 with the assistance of CO production, CO financing, and pre-sales arrangements. Corporation A new concert music department was formed in 1985 to CO ordinate the corporation's six symphony orchestras, which in turn received a greater level of autonomy to better respond to local needs. Open-air free concerts and tours, educational activities, and joint ventures with other music groups were undertaken at the time to expand the orchestra's audience reach. ABC Radio was restructured significantly again in 1985 Radio 1 became the Metropolitan Network, while Radio 2 became known as Radio National. New programs such as The World Today, Australia All Over, and the Coup des Bin Champions were introduced, while ABC FM established an Australian music unit in 1989. Radio Australia began to focus on the Asia Pacific region, with coverage targeted at the Southwest and Central Pacific, Southeast Asia, and North Asia. Radio Australia also carried more news coverage with special broadcasts during the 1987 Fijian coup, Tiananmen Square Massacre, and the First Gulf War. In 1991, the corporation's Sydney Radio and Orchestral Operations moved to a new building built by Leighton Holdings on a single site in the inner-city suburb of Ultimo. In Melbourne, the ABC South Bank Centre was completed in 1994 and now houses the radio division in Victoria as well as the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra. The ABC Multimedia Unit was established in July 1995, to manage the new ABC website. Funding was allocated later that year specifically for online content, as opposed to reliance on funding for television and radio content. The first online election coverage was put together in 1996, and included news, electorate maps, candidate information, and live results. By the early 1990s, all major ABC broadcasting outlets moved to 24-hour-a-day operation, while regional radio coverage in Australia was extended with 80 new transmitters. Live television broadcasts of selected parliamentary sessions started in 1990. ABC News Radio, a continuous news network broadcast on the parliamentary and news network when Parliament is not sitting, was launched on October 5, 1994. Structure International Television Service Australia Television International was established in 1993, while at the same time Radio Australia increased its international reach. Reduced funding in 1997 for Radio Australia resulted in staff and programming cuts. Management Australia Television was sold to the Seven Network in 1998. However the service continued to show ABC News and Current Affairs programming up until its closure in 2001. The ABC's television operation joined its radio and online divisions at the corporation's Ultimo headquarters in 2000. Art and Culture – Stories I Want to Tell You in Person – The AZ of Contemporary Art – Current Affairs – 7.30 ABC News, Australian Story, Back Roads, Four Corners, Insiders, Landline, Media Watch, Q&A, The Drum, Comedy, Birds of a Feather, Growing Up Gracefully, It's a Date, Lukewarm Sex, Sean McAuliffe's Mad as Hell, 
Utopia, Documentaries and Factual, Antiques Roadshow, Ask the Doctor, Back Roads, Brian Cox, Life of a Universe, Catalyst, City in the Sky, Compass, David Attenborough's Natural History Museum Alive, Dream Built, Enigma Man, A Stone Age Mystery, Grand Designs, Grand Designs New Zealand, The Checkout, Q&A, Joanna Lumley's India, Mary Berry's Absolute Favorites, Media Watch, Drama, Agatha Raisin, Cleverman, Death in Paradise, Doc Martin, Father Brown, Happy Valley, Humans, Line of Duty, Midsomer Murders, Prime Suspect 1973, Pulse, Entertainment, Adam Hills, The Last Leg, Eggheads, Gardening Australia, Grand Designs, Growing Up Gratefully, Hard Quiz, Pointless, Chi. Antiques Roadshow. Shortcuts to Glory, The Checkout, The House, You Can't Ask That, Indigenous, Cleverman, Environment, Wildlife at the Zoo, Landline, Gardening Australia, News, 7.30, ABC News, Australian Story, Back Roads, Four Corners, Insiders, Landline, Media Watch, Offsiders, Q&A, The Drum, Sport, Golf, PGA Tour Highlights, Offsiders, Special Events, Science, Ask the Doctor, Becoming Superhuman, Brian Cox, Life of a Universe, Catalyst, Gardening Australia, Humans, Stargazing Live, Todd Sampson's Life on the Line. In 2001, digital television commenced after four years of preparation. In readiness, the ABC had fully digitized its production, post-production and transmission facilities heralded at the time as the greatest advance in television technology since the introduction of color. The first programs to be produced in widescreen were drama series Something in the Air, Grassroots and In the Mind of the Architect. At the same time, the ABC's multimedia division was renamed ABC New Media, becoming an output division of the ABC alongside television and radio. Legislation allowed the ABC to provide multi-channels additional, digital only television services managed by the new media division. Soon after the introduction of digital television in 2001, Fly TV and the ABC Kids Channel launched, showing a mix of programming aimed at teenagers and children. Adelaide Symphony Orchestra, Melbourne Symphony Orchestra, Queensland Symphony Orchestra, Sydney Symphony Orchestra, Tasmanian Symphony Orchestra, West Australian Symphony Orchestra. In 2002, the ABC launched ABC Asia Pacific the replacement for the defunct Australia Television International operated previously by the Seven Network. Much like its predecessor, and companion radio network Radio Australia, the service provided a mix of programming targeted at audiences throughout the Asia-Pacific region. Funding cuts in 2003 led to the closure of Fly TV and the ABC Kids Channel. Funding Politics and Criticism Independence and Impartiality Criticisms The ABC launched a digital radio service. ABC Dig, in November 2002, available though the internet and digital television, but not available through any other terrestrial broadcast until DAB and became available in 2009. ABC2, a second attempt at a digital-only television channel, launched on March 7, 2005. 
Unlike its predecessors the new service was not dependent on government funding, instead running on a budget of $3 million per year. Minister for Communications Helen Koonin inaugurated the channel at Parliament House three days later. Genre restrictions limiting the types of programming the channel could carry were lifted in October 2006 ABC2 was henceforth able to carry programming classified as comedy, drama, national news, sport, and entertainment. A high incidence of breast cancer in female staff working at the ABC's offices in Brisbane led to the closure of the site, based in Tohung. On December 21, 2006, 16 women were diagnosed with the disease in a period spanning 1994 to 2007. A progress report released in March 2007 by an independent panel formed to investigate the occurrences found that the rate of occurrence for breast cancer rate at the offices was 11 times higher than elsewhere after the closure of the site. The ABC's Brisbane-based television and radio operations were moved to alternate locations around the city, including 10 Brisbane S studios at MT Kutdha. The ABC's managing director, Mark Scott, announced in August 2007 that new studios would be built on the site, following the final release of the Review and Scientific Investigation Panel's report. In January 2012 the ABC in Brisbane moved into purpose-built accommodation in South Bank. On February 8, 2008, ABC TV was rebranded as ABC One, complementing the existing ABC Two digital-only channel which was launched on March 7, 2005. Branding was also added for a new kids channel that had been announced throughout the Howard government based on their winning the 2007 election but left to the 2009 Rudd government budget where ABC3 was funded and announced in June. A new online video on demand service launched in July of the same year, titled ABC iView, and the ABC launched digital radio broadcasts in the same month. ABC News launched on July 22, 2010, and brought with it both new programming content as well as a collaboration of existing news and current affair productions and resources. The ABC launched the 24-hour news channel to both complement its existing 24-hour ABC News radio service and compete with commercial offerings on cable TV. It became the ABC's fifth domestic TV channel and the fourth launched within the past 10 years. On July 20, 2014, ABC One reverted to its original name of ABC. In 2014 the ABC ran its first Mental as Week focusing on improving awareness of mental health issues, as part of Mental Health Week. 1960s and 1970s In December 2015 it was announced that former BSKYB, Star TV, and Google executive Michelle Guthrie would take over from managing director Mark Scott, who was to retire in April 2016. Below is a diagram of the ABC's divisional structure. The operations of the ABC are governed by a board of directors, consisting of a managing director, five to seven directors, and until 2006, a staff-elected director. The managing director is appointed by the board for a period of up to five years, but is eligible for renewal. The authority and guidelines for the appointment of directors is provided for in the Australian Broadcasting Corporation Act 1983. Hawke Keating Government Howard Government Rudd Gillard Rudd Government Appointments to the ABC board made by successive governments have often resulted in criticism of the appointee's political affiliation, background, and relative merit. 
Past appointments have associated directly with political parties Five of fourteen appointed chairmen have been accused of political affiliation or friendship, include Richard Downing and Ken Meyer, as well as Sir Henry Bland. David Hill was close to Neville Rann, while Donald MacDonald was considered to be a close friend of John Howard. From 2003 the Howard government made several controversial appointments to the ABC board, including prominent ABC critic Janet Albrechtson, Ron Brunton, and Keith Weinscootel. During their 2007 federal election campaign, Labour announced plans to introduce a new system, similar to that of the BBC, for appointing members to the board. Under the new system, candidates for the ABC board would be considered by an independent panel established at arm's length from the communications minister. If the minister chose someone not on the panel's shortlist, they would be required to justify this to Parliament. The ABC chairman would be nominated by the Prime Minister and endorsed by the Leader of the Opposition. The new merit-based appointment system was announced on October 16, in advance of the new triennial funding period starting in 2009. Current board members are Abbott Turnbull Government The ABC is funded mainly by the Australian Government, in addition to some revenue received from its retail outlets. In the 2006-07 federal budget, the ABC received $823 million of government funding, increased to $840 million in 2008-09. In the 2009-10 federal budget, the ABC received funding of $929.9 million. Until 1948, the ABC was funded directly by radio licence fees. Amendments were also made to the Australian Broadcasting Act that meant the ABC would receive its funding directly from the federal government. Licence fees remained until 1973 when they were abolished by the Whitlam Labour government, on the basis that the near universality of television and radio services meant that public funding was a fairer method of providing revenue for government-owned radio and television broadcasters. The term where your eight cents a day goes, coined in the late 1980s during funding negotiations, is often used in reference to the services provided by the ABC. It is estimated that the cost of the ABC per head of population per day was 7.1 cents a day, based on the corporation's 2007-08 base funding of $543 million. Budget figures above show the ABC costs over 14 cents per day today. Federal funding to the ABC, of $1,022.6 million in 2016-17, dollars $1,029.9 million in 2017-18, and $1,036.5 million in 2018-19. Under the Australian Broadcasting Corporation Act 1983, the ABC board is bound to maintain the independence and integrity of the corporation and to ensure that the gathering and presentation by the corporation of news and information is accurate and impartial according to the recognized standards of objective journalism. In relation to impartiality and diversity of perspectives, the current ABC editorial policy requires of the broadcaster that the ABC gather and present news and information with impartiality and presents a diversity of perspectives so that, over time, no significant strand of thought or belief within the community is knowingly excluded or disproportionately represented. The broadcaster is expected to take no editorial stance other than a commitment to fundamental democratic principles. As a publicly funded broadcaster, the ABC is expected not to take editorial stances on political issues, 
and is required to present a range of views with impartiality. Over the decades, accusations of bias at the ABC have arisen at different times, and various inquiries undertaken. Reviews of the ABC are regularly commissioned and sometimes not released. A 2004 Roy Morgan Media Credibility Survey found that media professionals regarded ABC Radio as the most accurate news source in the country. In mid-2013 the University of the Sunshine Coast released a study of the professional views of journalists. Slightly over half of respondents expected to vote for either Labour or the Greens whereas just under a third planned to vote coalition. In contrast over 40% of ABC journalists would vote for the Greens and almost a third Labour. Dr. Rhonda Jolly's 2014 ABC overview noted that many commentators have argued consistently that there is a left-wing bias which dominates ABC news and programming and cited a 2005 piece by Paul Gray that the broadcaster was overly influenced by the narrow middle-class values of the Australian secular left and said that while the national broadcaster had at times offended governments of all persuasions, it had always adopted a from-the-left perspective. Jolly also noted however that supporters of the ABC deny claims that the broadcaster is either intentionally or inadvertently biased and that, speaking from opposition, politicians have praised the ABC for its scrutiny of government. The paper noted that, in December 2013, ABC chairman James Spiegelman called for independent audits a year in response to the frequent allegations of lack of impartiality in news and current affairs. In response to one set of criticisms, journalist Annabelle Crabb, who has worked at the ABC, commented, Every single day I see that organization give voices to Australians who otherwise wouldn't be heard on topics that are too uncommercial or too remote or too hard to be covered by anyone else, broadcasting into areas from which others have long withdrawn resources. Opposition to Australia Day ABC Journalists in Politics The conservative Liberal Party governments in the 1960s and 1970s attempted to influence the ABC's political coverage by threatening to reduce funding for its news and current affairs division. Bob Hawke criticized some of the 7.30 Report's coverage of the 1991 Gulf War to which he committed naval forces as being loaded, biased, and disgraceful. Services for much of the Howard government years, ABC TV's masthead political programs were anchored by Labour-affiliated journalists Kerry O'Brien, Barry Cassidy, and Maxine McHugh. 7.30 Report and Insiders were hosted by former Labour staffers Kerry O'Brien and Barry Cassidy respectively, while the 2007 election saw late-line host McHugh defeat Liberal Prime Minister John Howard as the Labour candidate for the seat of Benny Long. At that same election, Liberal frontbencher Joe Hockey was challenged unsuccessfully by ABC Sydney News weatherman turned Labour candidate Mike Bailey in the seat of North Sydney. Radio Television Studios Online International Commercial Orchestras Lisa Juice Curve Logo Of the 1996 prime ministerial election debates between opposition leader John Howard and Labour Prime Minister Paul Keating, Howard later wrote, I flatly refused to have Kerry O'Brien of the ABC because of the way he had handled the second keating Hewson debate in 1993 in which O'Brien went into bat for Keating. Howard went on to win that election. A decade later, 
the ABC Media Watch program reported that NSW Liberal Senator Conchetta Fieravanti Wells had written to her constituents to say that the ABC had a collective loathing of John Howard. At the end of the Howard government's term in 2007, left wing political commentator Robert Mann wrote in the monthly that the Howard government had viewed the broadcaster as being run by left wing ideologues who had supposedly pushed the agenda of the left on issues like refugees, the republic, multiculturalism, reconciliation, radical feminism, extreme environmentalism, anti Americanism gay rights and so on. Soon after coming to office in 1996, the Howard government reduced the ABC's operating grants by 10 percent. Its appointment of Jonathan Shire to the position of managing director was controversial, for his program of budget cuts, restructuring and the loss of several high-profile personalities and shows. Shire left the position early on October 31, 2001. 7.30 report anchor Kerry O'Brien opposed Howard's budget cuts to the ABC, and describes the appointment of Shire as its managing director as a manifestation of the conservative obsession with the ABC as a kind of biased, left-wing culture. In Howard's last election, he was defeated in the seat of Benny Long by Labour candidate Maxine McHugh, who had hosted Late Line during the Howard era. Peter Mares reported for Radio National that some wags described it as an internal promotion, while others said she'd simply moved from the media wing to the political wing of the ALP. Mares consulted ABC journalist turned NSW liberal MLA Pru Goward who said, I have no doubt there was left-wing bias, I certainly thought it when I was there, while McHugh said there was no left-wing bias, though what I detected years ago in the ABC, much more of a collectivist philosophy. ABC TV's masthead political programs continued to have strong Labour Party connections through the period. In October 2010, the ABC announced that former Labour staffer Kerry O'Brien would host Four Corners, beginning in 2011. Former Labour staffer Barry Cassidy continued to host the Insiders program. In December 2010, Chris Ullman, husband of Labour MP Guy Brotman, was appointed as CO host of the 7.30 Current Affairs program. In 2012, Sydney ABC News anchor Juanita Phillips began a relationship with Labour's Minister for Climate Change, Greg Comet. Conservative commentators such as Andrew Bolt, Tim Blair and Gerard Henderson accused the ABC of a left-wing bias. Liberal Prime Minister Tony Abbott perceived the ABC to be left-wing and hostile to his government while his successor Malcolm Turnbull enjoyed better relations with the national broadcaster. When the ABC CO operated with The Guardian to publish stolen documents purporting to reveal monitoring of Indonesian officials by Australian spy agencies under the Rudd government, Abbott told 2GB Radio, a lot of people feel at the moment that the ABC instinctively takes everyone's side but Australia's. Abbott reportedly called the Q&A program a lefty lynch mob. When it invited a man convicted of threatening Commonwealth officials to participate in questioning one of his ministers amid a heightened terrorism alert in June 2015, Abbott asked the makers of the program, whose side are you on? The ABC found that there had been an error of judgment, but repeated the program later in the week prompting Abbott to say that heads should roll over the affair. Abbott initiated a brief ministerial boycott of the Q&A program following the affair. The broadcaster was critical of Abbott when he broke an election eve promise not to make cuts to the ABC, and required 4.6% cuts over five years as part of his budget repair program. 
In early 2015, an internal ABC review of its coverage of Joe Hockey's first budget criticized the post-budget interviews by 7.30 and Late Line, finding that the interviewers had given the impression of bias. When Abbott lost the leadership to Turnbull in the September 2015 liberal leadership spill, the hosts of the ABC's political program spoke in favor of Abbott's demise. Kerry O'Brien and Barry Cassidy, hosts respectively of the ABC's flagship weekly current affairs programs Four Corners and Insiders, welcomed the replacement of Abbott by Turnbull, as did ABC radio commentators Fran Kelly Paul Bongiorno and Amanda Vanstone. Fairfax and News Limited reported that Lee Sales, the host of 7.30 gave Turnbull an unusually warm first interview following his toppling of Abbott. In a March 2016 interview with ABC Managing Director Mark Scott, Media Watch host Paul Berry examined the question of perceptions of left-wing bias at the ABC. Scott noted that while perhaps the ABC was more concerned about gay marriage than about electricity prices, he did not accept the criticism of bias because a lot of that criticism comes from right-wing commentators and they wonder where are the strong right-wing commentators on the ABC. We don't do that kind of journalism. We don't ask questions about our journalists' voting pattern and where their ideology are. We look at the journalism that they put to air and we have strong editorial standards. Following the interview, conservative ABC critic Andrew Bolt wrote How can the man heading our biggest media organization be so blind to the ABC's unlawful and dangerous leftist bias? While former Media Watch host Jonathan Holmes wrote for The Age that this interview indicated that ABC management had failed to recognize a clear problem of left-wing bias among some capital city radio presenters. Over the period, ABC TV and radio hosts advocated strongly in support of same-sex marriage, upon which the wider Australian community and political parties were divided. When the Turnbull government announced plans for a postal plebiscite on the issue, advocacy for change continued, prompting a call for restraint from the ABC's editorial policy manager Mark Maley. An interview by ABC presenter Joe O'Brien with Lyle Shelton was the subject of a complaint by the Australian Christian Lobby. Bringing up Ian Thorpe's swimming achievements, O'Brien asked Shelton what right do you have to participate in that joy, and take national pride in those achievements, if you now deny him the right to feel like an equal and experience the joy of marriage. In rejecting any perceived bias, the ABC said it was a devil's advocate question and not inconsistent with standards. The ABC is criticised for giving undue support to opposition to Australia Day being held on January 26. In 2017, the ABC's youth radio network announced that, after extensive consultation and opinion polling, it would no longer play its hottest 100 Australian music list on Australia Day choosing instead to broadcast the playlist on the fourth weekend in January. The Federal Communications Minister Mitch Fifield said in response I am bewildered by the ABC's decision to move the hottest 100 from Australia Day. The ABC shouldn't be buying into this debate. Australia Day is our national day. The ABC should honour it and not mess with the hottest 100. In 2018, an opinion piece appeared on ABC's website suggesting the date should be moved to January 1st, citing symbolism. A number of former journalists and presenters have moved from positions at the ABC to politics. State Labour Premiers and Chief Ministers Bob Carr, Alan Carpenter and Claire Martin are all former ABC journalists.
Other ABC Labour politicians include Mary Della Hunty, Maxine McHugh, Mike Bailey, Ian Baker, Leon Bignall, John Bowler, Bob D. Bus, Maylarn Dury McCarthy, Frank McGuire, Neville Oliver, and Diana Warnock. Senior ABC political reporter Kerry O'Brien was press secretary to Labour Prime Minister Gough Whitlam and Labour Deputy Leader Lionel Bowen and Barry Cassidy was press secretary to Labour Prime Minister Bob Hawke. Susan Templeman's husband, Ron Fuller, is the former chief of staff for ABC TV News. Radio National's Philip Adams is a former member of the Communist Party of Australia and the Labour Party, and Melbourne ABC Radio's John Fain is a former member of the Labour Party. On the coalition side of politics, Prue Goward has served as a minister in the NSW state Liberal government, Rob Messenger, Peter Collins, Owen Cameron, Scott Emerson, and Sarah Henderson all held, or hold, positions at the ABC. Radio National's Counterpoint program is hosted by former Liberal Minister Amanda Vanstone, who describes herself as liberal rather than conservative. Research undertaken by the broadcaster in 2007 indicated that out of a total of 19 former employees moving into party political positions, 10 have joined the Labour Party and 9 the Liberal Party. The ABC operates 54 local radio stations, in addition to four national networks and International Service Radio Australia. In addition, DIG Radio launched on digital platforms in 2002, currently offering three separate stations. ABC Local Radio is the corporation's flagship radio station in each broadcast area. There are 54 individual stations, each with a similar format consisting of locally presented light entertainment, news, talk back, music, sport and interviews, in addition to some national programming such as AM, PM, The World Today, sporting events and nightlife. ABC Grandstand is a live radio sports-focused commentary and talkback program which runs on the Australian Broadcasting Corporation local radio network across Australia and on one digital-only station. The program runs on Saturdays and Sundays, typically from noon or an hour before, until 6 p.m. Double J is aimed at over 30s alternative music listeners. It is owned and operated by the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. ABC Jazz was launched as a digital-only station designed to broadcast a variety of different jazz styles including bebop, acid jazz, cool jazz, and contemporary styles of jazz. Triple J Unearthed is where artists upload their music and they play and judge it on the channel. ABC Extra is for special events National Digital Radio Channel brings you extra coverage of events and ideas that matter. ABC Radio Australia is the international radio station. ABC Country features country style music. ABC Radio National broadcasts more than 60 special interest programs per week covering a range of topics including music, comedy, book readings, radio dramas, poetry, science, health, the arts, religion, social history, and current affairs. ABC News Radio is a rolling news service, previously known as the Parliamentary and News Network. The service was established to broadcast federal parliamentary sittings, to relieve the local ABC radio network from this intermittent task, and to provide a news service at other times. The network broadcasts news on a 24 7 format with updates on the quarter hour. Much of its news content is produced by the ABC itself. However many programs are relayed from the BBC World Service, NPR, Deutsche Welle, Radio Netherlands, and CNN Radio. 
ABC Classic FM was the ABC's first FM radio service. It was originally known simply as ABC FM, and for a short time ABC Fine Music. Its format borrowed heavily from community stations that eventually founded the Fine Music Network, as well as BBC Radio 3. Triple J is the national youth radio network, and broadcasts contemporary alternative and independent music, it is targeted at people aged 1835. While the network plays music from around the world, it has a strong focus on local artists. Triple J was formerly known as Double J when it launched in Sydney on January 19, 1975. ABC Radio broadcasts regular news bulletins across most of its radio stations. Many of these bulletins are heralded by the Majestic Fanfare, written by British composer Charles Williams in 1935. The ABC operates six national television channels. ABC is a TV channel that consists of programs of ABC HD has the same programs as ABC but is in high definition. ABC Comedy has comedy and was renamed on December 4, 2017 from ABC2. ABC Me is another TV channel, but with a focus for primary school children, 6-15 years old. It broadcasts a range of genres, including comedy, drama, music, animation, extreme sports, wildlife, and news-based programs. ABC Kids is a TV channel for children under 6, with educational programs. ABC News is a 24-hour news channel with news-related programs, such as News Breakfast, Weekend Breakfast, ABC News Mornings, ABC News at Noon, ABC News Afternoons, ABC News Early Edition, 7.30, Insiders, Four Corners, Behind the News, Q&A, Catalyst, Landline, Offsiders, One Plus One, The Business, The Drum, The Quarters, The World, State to State, Capitol Hill. The ABC operates ABC Studios. ABC, the corporation's original television service, receives the bulk of funding for television and shows first-run news, and ABC Kids. An experimental multimedia unit was established in 1995, charged with developing policy for the ABC's work in web publishing. This unit continued until 2000, when the new media division was formed, bringing together the ABC's online output as a division similar to television or radio. The division had over a million pages of material published by late 2003. In 2001, the new media division became New Media and Digital Services reflecting the broader remit to develop content for digital platforms such as digital television. In addition to ABC Online, the division also had responsibility over the ABC's two digital television services, Fly TV and the ABC Kids Channel, until their closure in 2003. In March 2005 the division oversaw the launch of ABC2, a free-to-air digital television channel, in effect a replacement for ABC Kids and Fly. In conjunction with the ABC's radio division, new media and digital services implemented the ABC's first podcasts in December 2004. By mid-2006 the ABC had become an international leader in podcasting with over 50 podcast programs delivering hundreds of thousands of downloads per week, including trial video podcasts of The Chasers War on Everything and JTV. In February 2007, 
the new media and digital services division was dissolved and divided up amongst other areas of the ABC. It was replaced by a new innovation division, to manage ABC online and investigate new technologies for the ABC. In 2015, the innovation division was replaced with the digital network division. Australia Network, formerly ABC Asia Pacific, is an international satellite television service operated by the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, funded by advertising and grants from the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Aimed at the Asia-Pacific region, the service broadcasts a mixture of English-language programming, including general entertainment, sport and current affairs. ABC Radio Australia is an international satellite and internet radio service with transmissions aimed at East Asia and the Pacific Islands, although its signals are also audible in many other parts of the world. It features programs in various languages spoken in these regions, including Mandarin, Indonesian, Vietnamese, Khmer and Tok Pisin. Before January 31, 2017 Radio Australia broadcast shortwave radio signals which were terminated in favour of online and satellite radio. Radio Australia bulletins are also carried on WRN broadcast, available via satellite in Europe and North America. ABC Commercial is the division of the ABC responsible for pursuing new sources of revenue for the corporation. It is composed of ABC Retail, ABC Consumer Publishing and Content Sales, as well as ABC Resource Hire. ABC Retail Outlets were established in 1974. All profits from the sale of consumer product and production services return to the corporation to reinvest in program making. Up until the installation of disc recording equipment in 1935, all content broadcast on the ABC was produced live, including music. For this purpose, the ABC established broadcasting orchestras in each state and in some centres also employed choruses and dance bands. This became known as the ABC Concert Music Division, which was controlled by the Federal Director of Music the first of whom was W.G. James. There are currently six state symphony orchestras. The orchestras were corporatized in the 1990s, and were divested into independent companies on January 1, 2007. The ABC logo is one of the most recognisable logos in Australia. In the early years of television, the ABC had been using Lissa Juice curves as fillers between programmes. In July 1963, the ABC conducted a staff competition to create a new logo for use on television, stationery, publications, microphone badges, and ABC vehicles. In 1965, ABC graphics designer Bill Kennard, who had been experimenting with telerecording of the cathode ray oscilloscope displays, submitted a design which was part of the waveform from an oscilloscope. The letters ABC were added to the design and it was adopted as the ABC's official logo. Kennard was presented with £25 for his design. Since its original introduction in 1965, it has been updated several times, including with the introduction of colour television in 1975. The line was thickened to feature colour in the logo. The 1975 logo is the longest-running logo, with a lifespan of 27 years. In 2001, with the introduction of digital television in Australia, ABC Television adopted a modified version of the logo, featuring a silver 3D look and losing the over-and-under design. However, despite the launch of this logo, the 1975 logo is still used by the corporation. 
in July 2002, to celebrate the ABC's 70th anniversary, the corporation adopted a new logo across all media. This new logo still used the silver 3D color but reverted to its over and under design. In 2014, as part of ABC 1S renaming back into ABC TV, the 1975 logo was brought back to on air presentation. Despite this, the 2002 silver logo remains in usage by the corporation.